So quiz three, we're going to move that to Wednesday just to make the logistics a little bit easier. Okay, of the kind of alternating. Having them back to back was like, okay, well, if I'm supposed to be on Zoom today, when do I take quiz two? Quiz, quiz two is today, and then quiz three is the whole uh, mishmash. So it's probably easier if we just have a little gap there. Okay, so we'll move that, cross it out on your schedule, send it over. I uh, didn't realize that I forgot to post the quiz stuff on Canvas for this class. So I've got the first three up there. I'll put the rest of them up there uh, later, uh, later today. So I will update Canvas so that it looks like the grid, so you have it on your Canvas calendar for your, your quizzes and your tests and stuff like that. OK. So let me see. Uh, Okay, one thing I was being a little tricky about. I did say, if you had a question on something, ask before class, ask at office hours, anything like that. Help me out with question. Oh, okay, you, you don't have it anymore. Well, let, let me do this. Uh, if you've got your book, open up with me to page 19. I'm an elementary master teacher, I'm on page 19. Okay, there was a little bit of reading here in the uh, section 1.4 or section 1.3, I guess, about proper use of equal sign. Okay, at the end of the section, this is on page 18, it talks about proper use of equal sign. And then it gives us some questions on page 19 dealing with proper use of equal sign. So, If I'm on, let's say, page 19, and I'm looking at question number 8A, and let's say a student wrote that, Ryan equals $2. What do you think they should have written instead? Because remember, proper use of equal sign means the thing on the left side is the same as the thing on the right side. Okay? So when you're writing equals, read it that way. Read is the same as this over here. So does this mean Ryan is the same as two dollars? Is that what the student should be writing? So what do you think he should have done instead? Probably Ryan has two dollars something like that. It was probably a word problem where they were asking how much money he has left or something like that. Ryan had $20 and spent 18 on, I don't know, something that cost 18 bucks. Uh, how much does he have left? Ryan has $2, okay? And another kind of uh, situation where this runs where this happens a lot is, let's say a student is working on this problem, uh, 17 plus 8 plus 14, okay? A student might say, okay, 17 plus 8 equals 25 plus 14 equals 39. This is actually incorrect. This is saying 17 plus 8 is the same as 25 plus 14. That's not true. There's your trouble. 17 plus 8 is not the same as 25 plus 14. 17 plus 8 is 25 by itself. You need to have the 14 here. 17 plus 8 plus 14 is the same as 25 plus 14. Okay? A lot of students use the equal sign to mean I did a computation. Okay? But that's not what equals means. It means the two things on both sides are the same. Okay? So keep that in mind. And if you didn't get through all of section 1.3 there, make sure you read that whole thing 
including that bit on correct use of equal sign. Okay. So, in the previous couple classes, we hit addition, we hit subtraction. What's next? Multiplication. Okay, so we talked about counting properties and writing down numerals. Then we're getting into the operations, and we're introducing them in the order that they would be introduced in primary school. Okay, so what are we in, section 1.5 here? Okay, so multiplication. Okay, so... ideas first is multiplication as repeated addition operations, we'll talk about some models that are useful for introducing the operations. Now remember, when we're dealing with a model of something, we want to be able to get the answer by looking at the model. Okay? The models should come before we talk about the algorithms and knowing your facts. Okay, like addition facts or multiplication facts or the multiplication table, or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so a student that doesn't know that stuff yet should be able to use the models to get the answer. Uh, and we'll actually have three models. We'll talk about the set model. didn't have this one. Okay, and what's the last thing going to be? Mental math, right? That was a topic that we discussed in both of the other cases. We're going to continue that kind of pattern. Okay, so times five, and the way we would uh, think about this, or introduce it, or whatever, we're thinking of it as three groups of five. Okay, this tells you the number of groups, and this tells you how big the groups are. Okay, so five plus five plus five. So it's fairly easy with that idea of multiplication, it's fairly easy to understand how we would use the set model to illustrate this. So what would we, what would we do if I wanted to illustrate 3 times 5 with the set model? A group of 5 three times. Okay, so we'll draw some groups with 5 objects in them. So 1, Two, three groups. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now of course we know the answer is 15. The set model illustrates it pretty clearly because we can count it up. Just like with the addition model, the set model is okay, 
but if you lean too heavily on the set model, the students will tend to just count things up rather than actually do the multiply. Okay? So, oops, I gotta go back. So with the set model, we've got the distinct groups, this many groups, so one, two, three blobs, and then the five tells us how many items to put in each of the blobs. Okay, now when we're talking about the measurement model, what does our brain switch to? We're not drawing pictures anymore, what are we going to draw? number line. Okay, so the measurement model is either the number line or a bar diagram. Okay, both of them are fine. So when you're illustrating multiplication with the measurement model, you're talking about a number line. This tells you how many jumps that you're going to make. This tells you the size of the jump. Three jumps of five. Of course, we're starting at zero. Then we go five to ten, and finally to fifteen. Okay, so one, two, three jumps. Maybe one. One, two, three jumps, so that we see the three and the five in there. Okay, so three jumps of five, or three bars. Length five. Okay, so each bar is five, and we put maybe a question mark there saying we want to know how long the whole thing is. And that would indicate that the student should do three times five. Okay, remember when you're dealing with these bar diagrams, we typically want to insert a question mark somewhere for the quantity that we're trying to figure out. Okay, 
so remember, we're not trying to trick anybody with these names. Rectangular or array model, what do you think I should draw? Rectangle. A rectangle, okay? So I'm going to draw a rectangle. And in this rectangle, I want to illustrate 3 times 5. So how do you think I could use one rectangle to illustrate 3 times 5? Break it into sections. Okay, break it into sections. Okay, so 3 rows and then each row 1, 2, 3, 4 okay, 3 rows of 5 boxes. Now, did you notice what I did there? I said three rows of five boxes, but when I was doing the boxes, I went one, two, three, four, and then I stopped. Why didn't I go one, two, three, four, five? Each time you draw a line, you're dividing it. Each okay, time. right. Each time I draw a line, I'm actually making uh, two sections, right? I draw a line, I separate this from this. Okay, so if I want to take something and divide it into five pieces, I actually make four cuts. Four lines, okay? And we can see here with three rows of five objects, three times five equals 15. Okay? So the rectangular array model, not something that came up when we were talking about addition and subtraction. It makes sense when we're dealing with multiplication. Okay? The first factor tells you the number of rows, and then the second factor tells you how many boxes in each row, okay? Now, before we hit the rectangular array model, I started to write something down, and I was like, oh, oh I forgot something. What was I writing down before I erased it and went to that? Okay, I was talking about associative property. What else was I going to write down? Commutative property. Okay, so multiplication has the same has the same advantages that addition has in that we can do multiplication in any order. Okay, commutative property. 3 times 5 equals 5 times 3. Okay, we could illustrate this property nicely with, let's say, the set model. Because if we had three groups of five objects, we could draw those out, count them up, and see that we get 15. This would mean five groups, five big blobs, with three items in each blob. We count them up, we get 15. Okay? So, and of course, it's not just 3 and 5 that this applies to any two numbers. When we're multiplying, we can switch the order if we want. What does associative apply to again? Because we saw this property when we were dealing with addition. associative property. How many letters? You need three letters, okay? Remember with addition, it's if we're adding A, B, and C, if we're dealing with three numbers, it says we can add the first two together and then throw in the last one, or we can add the second two together and then tack on the first one. Same thing with multiplication. If we're finding a product of three numbers, A, B, and C, we can multiply the first two together and then hit it with the third, or we can multiply the second two together and then throw this into the mix. Okay, that's the associative property. These two together combine to give you the any order property of multiplication. Okay, there is one more property
that we can talk about now and that is the distributive property. We didn't bring this up when we were talking about addition. Why didn't I bring it up then? Do you remember this distributive property? Sometimes it comes up in algebra. What does it mean to distribute in the context of algebra? Okay, let me ask you this. What if I did, um, what if I said that? Okay, right. You would multiply the two to each one. Okay, so in other words, if I do 2, and maybe, I'll, maybe I'll, I'll put the multiplication symbol in there, x. If I did 2 times 3 plus 4, I should get the same thing as if I did 2 times 3 plus 2 times 4. Okay, we distribute the 2 to each of the terms inside the parentheses. Okay, so... Uh, the rectangular array model is actually kind of useful for illustrating this right here. 2 times 3 plus 4. Okay, so the parentheses, of course, indicate what steps we're supposed to do first, right? So we're supposed to do the 3 plus 4 first. So this is really 2 times what? 7. 2 times 7. Okay, and if we illustrate that with a rectangular array model, well, we would have a rectangle. How many rows? Two rows. So I'm just going to break it in half right here. And how many items should I put in each row? Seven. Okay, so two rows of seven boxes. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Two rows of seven boxes. Okay, now, what I like to do is, since I've got a couple different colors of chalk here, I'm going to do some shading to illustrate how we could show that this is the same as this. 2 times 7 is the same as 2 times 3 plus 2 times 4. Okay, so in this picture I have to find a sub-picture that represents 2 times 3. And that's right here, okay, that's 2 times 3. Okay, notice I shaded the first three boxes in each row. And over here, the rest of it is the picture for 2 times 4. Okay, so the picture for 2 times 7 includes the picture for 2 times 3, together with the picture for 2 times 4. So in other words, this is the same as that. Okay, if you don't have two different colors, then I would recommend you just shade one going this way, shade one going the other way, to illustrate, okay, we're looking at this part to represent the 2 times 3, and this part to represent the 2 times 4. Okay, so as you're reading through section 1.5, Okay, make sure you check out the models that they use to illustrate the various properties. Okay, it's all summarized here in the class notes, but you'll get some additional information from the textbook. And also, don't forget to hit my notes on Canvas, okay? In the section 1.5 module, I've got some scanned notes. Similar to what we did today, not exactly the same, okay? So some additional examples available there. All right, so how are we going to finish up today? Mental math. Mental math. Okay, so what's the theme in mental math? So far we've, we've seen a mental math for addition, mental math for subtraction. There was a recurring idea. Okay, right. find easier numbers to compute with. Now, what makes 
one number easier than another. Like, go ahead. Rounding it to the 10. Okay, right. We want stuff that's multiples of 10. Okay, we have a place value system. So the mental math techniques that we're talking about take advantage of the place value system by using multiples of 10. Now this is especially true for multiplication. How do you multiply by 10? Well, you just tack a zero onto the end. Okay, so multiplying by 10 is like the easiest thing you could possibly do. Okay? So whenever we see a 10 in there, we should use it. Okay? So the idea is use 10. Let me just give you a quick example. each. Okay, so, uh, let me uh, switch it up a little bit. Let me do 5 times, oh gosh, I don't know, 5 times 37 times 2. Alright, now I could kind of plow through this. I could figure out 5 times 37. Now, that's something I, I might need the pencil and paper algorithm to do. It's kind of, kind of ugly, okay? Um, but if I look to the end, I see, okay, I'm going to take 5 times 37, then I'm going to multiply by 2. All right, so now that I've looked at the whole thing, should I do 5 times 37 first? No. What should I do? 5 times 2. Right, 5 times 2. In other words, I should take advantage of the any order property that these two things together give me, right? I got three things, well, I could group them like this, and in fact, I could switch those because of the commutative property. So basically we're saying, okay, we're not going to do these two first, we're going to do these two first. And instead of doing 37 times 2, we're going to do 2 times 37. Maybe I'll even write it down. And then of course, 5 times 2 is 10, and so that just means we tack on the zero, okay? So, if you know your mental math strategies, stuff like this can become a lot easier. Okay, now, um, how do you multiply by two? You can usually do that one in your head. What is multiplying by two? The name I'm thinking of starts with a D. Double. Double, okay, you multiply something by two, you're doubling it. Okay, so maybe some strategies for individual numbers. Times two, whatever number you're dealing with, double it. Easy. All right, 14 times two, 28. 34 times two, 64. 17 times two, 34. Okay, so I'm just doubling. So the strategy here works for multiplying by 4 as well. We just have to do it twice. Double and then double again. by 8, double 3 times. Okay, so some quick examples here. Uh, what if I asked you to do 17 times 4? Okay, 17 double it. What do you get me to double 17? 34, okay? So I'm going to write down some steps here. So I double once, but of course that's not equivalent to multiplying by 4. Doubling is multiplying by 2. So i got to double again. Now double 34, and what do you get? 
68. Okay, so you can do that computation completely mentally, no need to do the pencil and paper algebra. Uh, what if I had 16 times 8? Let's try to do this one completely mentally and just write down the answer. So we got 16. Double it. What do you get? 32. Double that. What do you get? 64. One more time. 128. Okay, so 16 times 8 is 128. Completely mental math just by doubling. So 2, 4, and 8, very easy. 10, well, not even going to write that one down. Okay, that's place value property. Okay, on Monday, now remind me of this because I, that I have one other trick I want to show you with mental math. I want to show you how to multiply by 5 mentally. Okay, here, we got saved because this had a 2, okay, and it was really explicit there was a times 2. Okay, we'll talk about what to do when the times 2 isn't there. Okay, I will post a link to the a recording of today's class. Make sure you read through section 1.5 and for homework. One, two, four, six, seven, eight. What was that again? One, two, four, six, seven, eight. Right. One, two, four, six, seven, eight. What okay. page is that? Uh, starts on page 30. Okay. Okay, page 30. One, two, four, six, seven, eight. All right. And I'll see you next time.